All right, so now we're going to talk about motor data. Um, kind of touched on this a little bit earlier in the presentation, but uh, I kind of want to show you a few examples of what you'd see on a nameplate and uh, some of the, the application data, whether it was scaled correctly or not. We'll, uh, we'll go over that here. All right, so motor data between both the, the induction and permanent magnet motors, they're going to be uh, slightly different. Start out with the, uh, the induction machine. Again, we don't want you to enter in the synchronous speed, that, that 1200 RPM in the motor data. We should be entering in the, the slip speed. The slip speed, again, is going to be what the actual rotor speed is, is rotating at. The synchronous speed is going to be the speed at which the, the magnetic field is rotating at. So here's a, a Ruland example. Um, this is on a, on a Hollister Whitney geared machine. As you can see, we just have a, a, a synchronous speed, 1200 RPM here. Uh, what else we have? Frequency, three phase. We don't have a torque. Yeah, we don't have a torque. Also, another thing to notice, two sets of motor data, low voltage and high voltage. Uh, again, this is where, you know, if you're in low voltage, we need to make sure that we have the low voltage motor data entered into the drive. Likewise, if you're in high voltage, high voltage data, we can't combine different sets of data together. Uh, that's that's going to cause some, some operational issues. All right, here's another uh, Ruland example. Uh, it's roughly the same, same information here. We've got the dual, dual voltage configuration, but here they provided the, the full load RPM, so 1170. Between the induction and the uh, permanent magnet configurations, there's going to be different parameters that you can uh, enter into the motor data. For the induction, you will enter in the horsepower. For the permanent magnet, you'll enter in the torque. And then on the permanent magnet machines, the motor voltage will be calculated a little bit lower uh, after the auto-tune. That's because the, the drive is calculating a, a back EMF voltage. Uh, we don't need to change that. I know sometimes people will go back in and, and change that after the, the auto-tune. Uh, there is there is no need to, to change that. This equation again, um, you know, you're wondering uh, if the number of motor poles uh, is correct. Uh, this equation is slightly rearranged. Uh, we just divided by motor poles, multiplied by rated speed over here, but um, it's, the, it's the same equation that we saw earlier. All we're doing is taking the frequency times 120, dividing it by the number of motor poles. Uh, for the most common number of poles, I believe this guy here uh, should be a 44 pole motor. Uh, the the Hollister Whitney ones should be at uh, 28 or 44, I believe. And then the Torn and the Imperials should be at 20. All right, so here's an example of that application uh, versus nameplate data. So this was taken from, from actual data uh, from a motor. They, they actually uh, derated it. So in one application, the, from the nameplate, they were running at 102. But for this, the new application, they wanted it down to 78. So what did they do? They changed the frequency here. Went from 17 hertz down to 13. Again, number of motor poles remained constant. Motor current remained constant, as well as the power and the voltage. All right, this is another uh, uh, common thing, or I should say the thing that um, we, we're starting to see a little bit more and more of with, with the increased use of, of permanent magnets. Uh, some of the, the permanent magnets have a, a very low uh, frequency. I know the, the common one is uh, 3.2 uh, with Imperial. I'm not sure if, if Torn has any uh, low ones, but I um, actually just had one the other day that I was dealing with. Uh, the drive, the KEB drive, has a lower limit of, of 4 hertz that you can enter into the, the drive. So what do you do if you, if you have a motor that's 3.2 hertz? How do you, how do you deal with that? Uh, well, same as what you would do with um, the, the application data you would just scale it. Uh, so is what you would do is, is just scale it so that the number of motor poles remains constant. You know, in, in the 3.2 hertz application is what we do is we just double the frequency and double the RPM. As long as you apply the same factor uh, to your scaling, you're fine. In this example here is what we did is we just left it at, at 4 hertz, the lower limit. We kept the, the motor poles constant and we came up with a new RPM of, of 24. That's fine. Um, is what you can do if you're, if you're worried about uh, reaching contract speed. You can make some machine data changes or you can scale your, your pattern in the controller accordingly. 
Here's a couple of uh, equations that you can use uh, to figure out the, the torque uh, based on what information you're, you're given. For the most part, in the states here, we give the, the motor data should be uh, in, um, the power should be in horsepower, but occasionally you will run into one that you have in kilowatts, so you might have to convert. Likewise, if you're giving a torque in newton meters, you may have to, to convert to, to pounds feet. So we can just multiply by 1.355. All right, here's an example of uh, some Torin motor data here. Uh, they do a pretty good job of, of supplying a lot of, of information on here. If you kind of have a hard time seeing, but um, they do provide the number of poles. So we've got 20, that's good. Uh, they provide the, the frequency, 7.9 hertz, voltage, 330. Um, they also provide the, the power in horsepower, that's good. The lift speed in foot per minute, that's useful, along with the rotating speed in RPM. Uh, so they do provide both. Uh, one note on the RPM, the terminology uh, sometimes can be a little bit uh, different. In this case, it is denoted as R over minutes. Sometimes it's set, uh, it'll say a one over minute or actually RPM. All right, here's an example of an Imperial machine, what they have. Uh, they don't provide quite as much information, but uh, they do uh, pro provide the, the necessities here. We've got the horsepower up in the, the top, motor frequency, RPM. The only thing I'll, I'll say about this is it looks like on, on the nameplate, it looks like 7.6. Um, so you're not sure, is it 7.6, is it 76? Well, put it into the um, equation and see if the number of motor poles comes out uh, even and if it comes out at, at 20. So if you put in 7.6, it's not going to come out to, to 20 poles.